Hi, I'm Pastor LaFave. Welcome to my art studio, <laughs> such as it is. Um, but I was thinking that uh, in the midst of this coronavirus situation with everyone being stuck indoors and kids not being able to go to school, that it might be fun to talk about art and maybe give a few uh, demonstrations and classes that kids could uh, watch and enjoy. And parents could um, also uh, use a little break, you know, by having the kids having some creativity and activity time. So I thought I'd put together uh, a video lesson. Uh, this this one will be about the color wheel and uh, about using color. So uh, so before we begin, I just want to remind everybody how very important it is to wash our hands. Always be washing our hands uh, during this time to help us to not get sick. Be careful not to touch our face, watch our hands, keep clean, practice social distancing. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna trust the Lord to help to keep us well and strong. And before we begin working with paint, see, I just touched my face. That's, that's a hard habit to break. But before we begin working with paint, you might want to consider making a smock. You can do that with one of your dad's old shirts, cut, cut the sleeves off. And you can put your arms through it and wear it uh, either forward or backwards. Um, keep the buttons behind you or put the buttons in front and button it up. Or maybe just a big old extra large t-shirt that you can put over your clothes so that you don't get paint on your nice clothes and ruin them. Artists typically when they paint will get will be messy and will get paint on clothes. And those are the clothes that they'll use over and over again often to paint in because they, they're already ruined. So, but we don't want to do that and have to send your mom to the store to buy you some new clothes. So uh, think about a smock. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about some things that we're going to need. You're going to need a piece of paper and you're going to need uh, something round. It could be a bowl uh, or a small dish, something that will fit on your paper to make a round circle. We'll need a ruler. We'll need a pencil. We need a paintbrush and we'll need some water. You might want to keep some paper towels handy um, and a palette. Now, this is this is a palette pad, but you could use anything. You could use one of your mom's old plates um, that can be washed, the paint can be washed off of. And then we're also going to need three colors. Um, I'm using acrylic colors, but we need three colors. And these colors are called primary colors. You need a red, you need a yellow, and you need a blue. Now they don't have to be acrylic. They could be watercolors, uh, but two, wa two watercolors is best because we want to try to mix our colors a little bit. So, but, but before we start, let's create the wheel that we're gonna use. I have a piece of paper here and I got something round. I'm gonna put it on the paper. I'm gonna take my pencil. I'm gonna trace around the edge. Around the edge. All right. So now I have a nice circle there. I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, it's a circle. So now what I want to do is to make a pie out of my circle. So I need six pie shapes. So, and it doesn't really matter if they are all proportional, just so you get the idea. So I'm gonna make a line, one, and then turn it. And just pretend like you're cutting a pizza into six pieces. Another line that way, and then turn it once again, one more time. All right, that way. So you're gonna have drawn three lines on your paper and those three lines will make six pie shapes. I don't know if you could see that uh, very well. Try to get close. They don't have to be perfect, just so you have six spaces there. All right, so those are going to be how we're gonna make our color wheel. So we're gonna start off with red. I'm going to put some red on my palette. 
Just a nice little spot of red there. Okay. All right. And then I want to put some yellow on my palette. We're going to make three color spots. It's going to be yellow. And don't put them close together. We need good space in between. All right. And then one more for the blue. We'll take the blue and put one more nice color dot there on the blue. All right. Oh, let's see, this is a little messy already. So what I have here are three color spots on my palette. And you can see what I've done there. All right. Oh, the yellow is already running. Well, that's okay. All right, so I've got my brush and I've got my water. So what I want to do now is I want to take, I'm going to start with the yellow. And I'm going to take my yellow on my brush and I'm going to take one of these pie shapes on my wheel and I'm going to paint it in. I'll paint it in nicely so you can see it. All right. All right. So you can see now I've painted in a yellow pie shape. All right, good. Now I need to wash my brush out. Very good. I need to wash it out. Get the color out nicely. Take my paper towel, dry it off. I don't want to mix my colors yet, so I need to clean my brush good. All right. Now I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to use some red. I'm going to make a, a red pie. Now, when you're doing your color wheel, you want to skip a space. So I'm going to, I painted this yellow. I'm going to skip a pie space and then I'm going to paint a red in like this. I'll paint it in. All right, here's where practicing to color within the lines pays off and will help you. Oh, I need a little more water there. Sometimes if your paint is too dry, it won't spread nicely. If it's too wet, it'll run all over the place. So you don't want it, you don't want it to be either too dry or too wet. You want it to be just right. How do we know it's just right? Well, it's called trial and error experiment a little bit all right all right so here's what i've done now my color wheel has two primary colors red and yellow you see there all right and there's a space in between now there's a reason why we're going to do that space in between and i'll i'll show you in a minute all right so once again try to clean our brush out real good now, acrylic paint uses a lot of synthetic stain, color stains, chemical stains. And the chemical stains, as opposed to earth, earth colors or earth stains, natural colors from the earth, chemical stains um, won't come out. They're very, they're, very, uh, they're very bright and they don't come out very well. So don't worry if your brush doesn't look completely white. It probably won't, but try to get as most of the color out as you can. All right, so now we're going to do our blue. We're going to do our blue. Get a little water on the on the brush and the palette. Now, remember, when you're do, building your color wheel, you have to always skip one pie shape. So I've got one pie shape left that I can use over here to paint in my blue. So here we go. You try to paint between the lines. You know, I um, I used uh, when when we could get together and the family can get together. Uh, I would I have a granddaughter who's about nine years of age, and she just is a she just has a natural gift for art. She she's my little artist. She loves art. So when she comes over to Pa's house, uh, we always have an art lesson, and uh, I have. Um, I have boxes full of, of things that I can set up for, for still lifes and we'll set it up and she'll get her little paint out and I'll get my 
paint my canvases and we'll work together and we'll work on painting. And she really loves, 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 loves art. And, lo and I love spending time with her and I miss not being able to spend time with her uh, to work and to have art lessons. So uh, the next best thing is we're just going to we'll do an art lesson here online and work together. All right, so now I have my color wheel. I have my three primary colors here. You can see I'll bring it up closer for you to see. There's the three primary colors. Doesn't work, matter if the shapes are not perfectly even. That's okay. If, you, if you're a perfectionist and you want to take the time to measure it out and do it, that's fine. But uh, that's not really what's critical. What's critical is that we understand our colors and that we know how to use them. Now, so my color wheel is now half complete, 50% 50, 50 complete. So what are we going to do in those other spaces? Well, we're going to learn now how to mix colors. But I want you to understand that we start with three colors and they're called primary colors. And there will always be these three colors, red, yellow, and blue, red, yellow, and blue. Those are your first step colors. And you can work with those colors to build all the colors on the, on the color wheel. All right, so uh, we're going to learn about making uh, the secondary colors. The, we've got the primary colors. Now we want to do the secondary colors. And these colors will be called complementary colors. So if you, if you see your palette, you got your colors separated there. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to mix two colors together and make a different color. So how, how that works is... Let's just start off um, with the red and the yellow. So I want to take some of my yellow over here. Okay. And then I'll clean my brush real quick. All right. And then I'm going to take the same amount of red Get the same amount of red on my brush. And then I want to put the red into the yellow that I got over here separated. So I'm going to mix them all together. So you got red and you got yellow. So what happens when you get red and yellow? What happens when you get red and yellow is a different color, a new color, and it's called orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my color wheel and I'm using yellow and red, right? So yellow plus red makes orange. So we're going to paint the orange in the pie shape between the, the red and the yellow. There we go. Oh, needs a little water. All right. I hope you enjoy painting. Today's a rainy day. It's not a nice day. You can't go out and you can't really go outside and play in the yard either. So today, like a rainy day, is a great, great art day. Art days are great on rainy days. Yes, because often we don't feel very cheerful. The sun is not out. We don't feel very cheerful or very happy. But when we can make art and we can make something beautiful, out of uh, you know a rainy day or out of a negative situation, then it makes us to feel happy and glad again. And right now, I mean, the world is in a pretty scary place. It's a pretty negative situation. But I believe that God, the creator, who designed the whole world and painted it so beautifully with all the colors and all the plants and trees and animals, the birds and the lakes and the sky, the water, everything so gorgeous and beautiful. He created all of that so that we can admire it. And when we do art projects, when we actually paint, we, what we're doing is we're saying thank you to God because you did such a beautiful job creating all this. And we admire it so much that we just want to imitate. We want to copy what you did. And of course, we're, we can't be as good as God. No, no way can we do what God can do. But by by uh, trying to draw and paint the things that God has made, we're showing God how much we really appreciate 
him, the creator, and what he's done. All right, so now I have my color wheel. This side of the color wheel is complete. So yellow plus red makes orange. So, all right, so what happens if we mix blue and yellow? That's what we're gonna try next. Take the rest of your yellow paint and put it over here between the blue and then take some blue paint. Always remember to clean your brush in between. Take some blue paint and mix it into the yellow paint. All right, a little bit more yellow there. All right. So now my palette is going to look something like that. And so what happens when I put yellow and blue together, I have a new color. It's called green. So I'm going to paint. My green is going to go in between the yellow and the blue on the color wheel. I'm going to go in between the yellow and the blue. All right. All right. Okay. There we go. Got it. Nice. All right. Clean the brush. All right. So now my color wheel is almost complete. I have now my space between the yellow and the blue painted, and that is green. That's how you make green. What color do we need green for? Well, we need green for trees, and we need green for grass, and, uh, and uh, so green is a very useful color. All right, so I've got one more space, one more pie-shaped space on my color wheel which means that I have to now mix the red and the blue together to see what color I'm gonna get. All right, so I'm gonna take the red, I'm gonna take the blue. Oh my, what a pretty color that is. So now what I've got with red and blues, look at that beautiful lavender color. You know, it's kind of a purple color, lavender or purple. So red and blue makes purple. So I'm gonna take that color and I'm gonna paint it into my last pie shaped space. There we go. All right. Okay. All right, clean the brush. All right, so now my simple color wheel is complete. It is now complete, it's all filled in. There is what it looks like. And so you can see what happens when you mix blue and red together, you get purple. When you mix blue and yellow together, you get green. And when you mix red and yellow together, you get orange. Now, here's what you should do. Put uh, a one beside the red, draw a one beside the red, a one beside the blue, and a one beside the yellow on your color wheel. Those are your primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So then put a two next to your green, a two next to your orange, and a two next to your purple. So you've got one, two, one, two, one, two. So the first colors on the color wheel are your primary colors, those are the number ones. The second colors on your color wheel are the number twos, and uh, we call those uh, the secondary colors. And now I wanna show you about complementary colors. So what, happens to make a complementary color. When we say complementary colors, what do you think when you say uh, a compliment? So-and-so uh, um, -so gave a compliment. Say you just did a, a drawing or a painting and you showed it to your mom 
And your mom says, oh, honey, that's great. I love your colors. I love your work. So what did she do? She complimented you. And uh, to, to compliment something is to complete it. It's to, it's to uh, advance it. It's to say, yes, that's good. That's good. And that works together. That fits together. So, so we're going to talk about how colors work together and fit together on your, on your color wheel. So remember this, a number one always works with the number two directly across from it on the color wheel. So my number, my yellow here is a number one color. If I go straight across the color wheel, I come to my purple or my lavender, my lavender color. And my lavender color has a two on it. So that is the, the complementary color to yellow. Lavender complements yellow. These colors work well together. And when you're making a painting, if you have it in, if you have a lot of yellow in your painting, you also want to put uh, a fair amount of purple in there too, because it'll really look nice together. So now my uh, red, my red is the number one. What's the number two to the red? The complementary to red right across the color wheel is green. That's the number two across from the number one there. So green and green is the complementary color to red. Green and yellow, uh, green and red go well together. When do we often see red, co red color and green color together at, at a certain time of the year? When is that? We think about it. What's your favorite time of the year? Oh, I know, Christmas time, Christmas time. Think about it. When you see decorations, when you see Christmas cards, when you see uh, uh, all kinds of uh, beautiful colors around Christmas time, the predominant colors you're gonna see are red and green. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but uh, one of the great reasons is complementary colors. So in the same sense, springtime is coming. We're, we're right at almost springtime. And in the first uh, few weeks of May, the first two weeks of May especially, you're going to see a lot of springtime colors. They're, they're light colors. They're pastel colors. They're going to be a lot on the light side, like the yellows. So you're going to see a lot of, uh, well, we could, we could say basically that yellow and purple are like springtime colors. All right. So that leaves us now with our last number one, which is blue. Blue. Uh, is our number one. And if you go directly across the color wheel from blue, you come to the color orange. So we would say that orange is the complementary color of blue. And these two colors work very well together. If you're drawing or painting, you want to think about if your painting has a lot of blue in it, you want to make sure you got some orange in there too, because that balances it nicely. If it has a lot of orange in it, make sure you have some, some blue in there as well. And I'll show you an example of that in a moment. I have to go over to my art treasure chest and uh, I will show you an example of that. All right, just so that we can understand a little bit about colors. By the way, my favorite color is, guess what? My favorite color is orange. That's my favorite color. I'm sure everybody has a favorite color. What's your favorite color? All right, I'll be back one second. I have to bring over my art treasure chest. All right, so here it is. Here is my art treasure chest. All right, my art treasure chest. Let me just push my table aside here a little bit and you can see what I'm doing. This is my art treasure chest here. See, it opens up. And so I have, I keep a lot of paintings in my, in my art treasure chest. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, maybe I'll set it on a chair. Yeah. Set it up on a chair here. And you'll be able to see it better. There we go. How's that? Works. So I keep a lot of paintings in here that I've painted over the years. So here's one. 
that's a lighthouse. That's a that's the same lighthouse as that painting up there, but it's from a different view. That call is the Cape Netic Light or the Nubble Lighthouse. All right. All right. So, so here's a painting here. This painting I did outdoors at Saratoga, uh, Congress Park in Saratoga, and that is the Spit and Spat Fountain there. And you, it's an oil painting, and you'll see that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of green in here, and there's a tint of orange in there along with the green, and then also with the green, uh, there's some red in there. You can see how we use those colors. I'm looking for a very special painting here. Hopefully, I can find it. Oh, so here's a spring painting. From, from Congress Park. And so we got a lot of purple in here. So um, along with the purple, we, we keep our grass sort of yellow. We got some yellow in there, yellow kind of looking grass. So you can see how those complementary colors are working together. Here is a good example, a good example of how yellow colors and lavender colors work together. You can see what I've done here in this painting of this old abandoned building beside the road. Uh, the, the bright yellow colors here and in the sky, and they're balanced with a, a, a lavender tint in the, in the roof there. You can see how that works. All right. Well, that gives you that gives you some idea of how to work with colors. But I want to show you something. Anybody know what this is? Anybody know what this painting is? This is the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa. I copied this from a picture in an art book when I was 17 years of age in the 11th grade. I was in an art class and this is what I painted. And I just wanted to show you because I know a lot of you are aspiring to be artists and you want to learn to draw and paint. So what I wanna do is, is to encourage you to keep drawing, keep painting, keep coloring between the lines and then color outside the lines just for fun. And, and just really, the more you work at it, the better and better you will get all the time. Just keep going. The important thing is always to love art and to love what you're doing. All right. Well, I think that's probably good for today. Uh, maybe I'll have another lesson on another day and we'll talk about color some more or, or we'll talk about other concepts called tone, how to use tone, which Tones are not colors. Uh, for instance, white isn't a color and black is not a color. They're tones. And uh, colors um, colors um, have pigment in them, but uh, they also have tone too. So uh, we would say that the yellow on the color wheel is a very light tone, but its complementary color across from it is a very dark tone. So on our color wheel, we have... Uh, Oh, let me just also mention this. So on this side of the color wheel, yellow, orange, and red, we call those warm colors. They're warm colors, right? Because they remind you of heat. And then right across from them, you know, halfway on the other side, are what we call the cool colors, green, blue, and lavender, or purple. They are the cool colors. And we can talk about how to make paintings using warm colors and cool colors and tone, colors that are light in tone or colors that are dark or heavy in tone. So I would say probably on this color wheel, most of our color tones are on the darker side. We start with the very lightest tone here in the yellow. The orange is not, not as light. It's a little darker. The red's darker and so forth. The lavender is very dark, right? So these colors are here. What would you say the darkest color on the color wheel is? In tone? Probably the lavender, wouldn't it be? The lavender. Well, we'll talk more about tone on another lesson. But so for today, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. 
and I hope that you learned something, and I hope you that you have fun. The important thing is to have fun and enjoy what you're doing. All right, God bless and keep you till we meet again.